Many international visitors to Poland typically visit cities such as Krakow, uh, Warsaw, Gdansk, Poznan, Łódź, places like that and these are cities well worth visiting. But there is one city that isn't as well known uh, to international visitors to Poland which I think all visitors should come to and that is the city of Torun in central northern Poland. And I just want to give you three reasons why you should come and visit this city. Number one, it is a World Heritage Site. Number two, it is the birthplace of the astronomer Copernicus. And number three, it has one of the finest views in all of Poland. Welcome to the city of Torun. <music> Torun is a city of around 200,000 inhabitants and is about an hour and a half south of Gdansk and about two, two and a half hours from the Polish capital, Warsaw. Torun sits on the Vistula River, which is Poland's longest river, traveling all the way from the Polish-Czech border in the southwest of the country, up through Krakow, Warsaw, Bydgosz and Torun, and eventually reaching the Baltic Sea at Gdansk. It's a very ancient and historic city and you can happily spend a couple of days here exploring all that Torun has to offer. Being a large city, centrally located, Torun is very easy to reach from other parts of Poland. If you're flying internationally there are plenty of uh, large international airports not too far from the city uh, such as Gdansk, uh, even Poznan or Warsaw. But the nearest international airport is in the city of Bydgosz which is about an hour away. And travelling around Torun itself is also incredibly easy. There's a very good bus network, there's a tram network which they're currently in the process of expanding and you can also have city bikes and e-scooters at uh, very low rates. So exploring the city either on foot or uh, on bike or scooter or bus or tram is incredibly easy. The other great thing about Torun is that it's a very compact city so everything that you want to see, all the visitors attractions, are in a very small area and are easily accessible. Being centrally located, uh, Torun is an excellent base from which to explore other parts of Poland. So you could spend a few days, even a week or more here in Torun and explore other cities and attractions in the surrounding area using the great public transport network that exists here in Poland. If you want some of the best views of Torun, you need to come to the main road bridge that crosses the Vistula where there are some excellent uh, paths and cycle lanes uh, for you to use and you get the most amazing views of the city from here. Pisa in Italy is famous for its Leaning Tower but did you know that Torun also has its own Leaning Tower which is that building behind me, that tower behind me which is part of the old medieval fortifications and the legend goes that it was built by a Teutonic knight in penance for falling in love with a young woman and dating her which was forbidden according to the rules of the Teutonic Knights and he built it leaning because um, it showed how much he had deviated from his ways and the tradition that exists now is that uh, visitors, tourists uh, have to lean against the tower and only righteous people will be able to lean against the tower without falling over. If you lean against the tower and fall over then apparently you are even more crooked than that Teutonic Knight and it's been various things over the years. It's been used as obviously fortification, it's been used as a prison, it's been used as a museum. Uh, it used to also be used as a rather nice little bar uh, uh, which I used to visit regularly on my first uh, trips here to Torun. So the reason that the tower leans has probably got more to do with the fact that it was built on sandy ground. But the most famous um, resident from Torun is the astronomer Copernicus and Copernicus was the first person to discover that the Earth orbited the Sun, not the other way round. And uh, the Catholic Church condemned Copernicus as a heretic and uh, the Leaning Tower was used by some as an argument for God's punishment uh, for Copernicus's work and uh, was used as an argument in Rome to add Copernicus's work to a list of banned books. Anyway, here's the Leaning Tower from the other side. This path I'm on is the old King's Road 
that leads into the city of Torun. So the royalty would arrive on the Vistula and the barges and then they would walk into the city along this path. And the large church building behind me is the Cathedral of St John. It's well worth going in to visit and you can also climb up the tower and you get some uh, spectacular views over the city. The other place to go if you want a good view of the city is the old uh, town hall clock tower. The boat behind me used to be used to transport people across the river here in Torun. Uh, I do believe that there is a boat that can take passengers across the river today if you want for a small fee. And if I turn the camera around just on the other side of the river is the viewpoint uh, where I was at earlier filming the city from and uh, you can get across there fairly easily either use the foot uh, ferry that runs or alternatively walk across the footbridge and again you get some great views there. The tower behind me is called the Dovecut Tower. It's a 14th century uh, tower, defensive structure on the walls, but in the 19th century they added dovecots to it, hence its name. And these were used to house pigeons that were used to communicate with other garrisons uh, around the area. Hence the name, and if you look at the very top, you can just make out the hooks where the dovecots used to hang, uh, and then later on it was turned into residential accommodation. So, this gate is called the Convent Gate or the Gate of the Holy Spirit and uh, takes its name from the convent that used to sit outside the city walls but which was demolished in the 17th century but it's one of the most impressive uh, entrances gateways into the city of Torun. If you're visiting Torun, one of the places that you must visit is the house of Copernicus, which is the building behind me. And this was the house that Copernicus was born and he came from quite a wealthy merchant family. It's an interesting place to go, uh, so make sure that's on your itinerary when you come to Torun. The donkey behind me is called the Spanish donkey and it replaces what was a wooden donkey that used to sit there and it was used as a form of punishment so if you did something wrong in the city you were made to sit on that donkey and it has a little metal ridge along it and they would attack, uh, attach bags of sand to your legs to weigh you down uh, and believe me if you sat on it it would cause a lot of pain and discomfort. The great thing about Torun in the summer is there's so many places to eat out and the market square is filled with all these uh, outdoor tables serving really good food at uh, really affordable prices so uh, it's very much an outdoor city in the summer uh, there's always something going on here. The entrance behind me is called the Bridge Gate and it gets its name because it was the entrance to the only permanent crossing on the Vistula between here and Krakow and Krakow was right in the south of the country and there used to be a wooden bridge, a wooden crossing here and uh, for a very long time that was the only permanent crossing on the Vistula 
for hundreds and hundreds of miles. Behind me are the remains of the Teutonic Knights Castle here in Torun. The Teutonic Knights used to be a very powerful military force that controlled large swathes of what is now modern day Poland and uh, this is all that remains of their castle here in Torun. Uh, two three hours from here you can go and visit Malberg Castle which is the largest brick castle in the world which is um, also a Teutonic Knights castle well worth visiting but if you're in Torun also worth visiting this one it's much more interesting than it looks from the outside and uh, I'll go around the corner and show you uh, the largest remaining part of the castle so the most interesting part of the castle is the section behind me which is not only a military fortification used to defend the castle but was also the castle's latrines so it's a very simple but effective design. Not only do they have a way of defending the flank of the castle, but there is a river running underneath that tower, so they used it as their toilet block. Uh, they would do their business and then it would get washed away into the river. Very simple, very effective. So behind me, you've got a map of the uh, center of Tarun, the old historic center. And as you can see, it's fairly compact. All the historical sites are contained within a very uh, small area. Uh, so at the moment I'm stood just over here by the castle. You've got um, over here the new square of the town hall and uh, the cathedral. So everything within a very close distance, easy walking distance uh, here in the city. And the nice thing about Torun is there's lots of little alleyways to explore and there's loads of great places to go out to eat and drink and I keep discovering new places all the time so um, Torun has got a lot of uh, culture, it's a great food city, um, loads of activities, it's a big university city as well so you've got um, lots of students here which adds a lot of life and vibrancy to Torun. So there's stuff happening throughout the year, um, so it makes a fantastic destination uh, in which to visit. One of the other nice things they've got here in Torun is a theatre specifically dedicated for children. Uh, so behind me is the entrance, rather spectacular entrance, to the children's theatre. Uh, the only downside for any foreign visitors to Torun is that the productions are in Polish. But if you can understand Polish and you've got young children, it's definitely worth coming along to this theatre. It's my understanding that this uh, bar behind me is not only one of the oldest in Torun, but it's actually one of the oldest bars in all of Poland as well. Um, anyway, irrespective of whether that's true or not, I can certainly recommend it. They do a really good selection of beers and things, so uh, worth going to. And this is situated in the new town, the new town square. So you've got the old town square with the, uh, the town hall, and then you've got the new town square which is only five minutes walk away from the old town uh, with a large square. I mentioned that there's lots of ways to get around the city and one of the ways you can get around is using these bikes and uh, they're very easy, cheap to sign up to and then you can cycle them around the city and the first 20 minutes are free. One of the things that Torun is famous for is its gingerbread and there are many places where you can buy the gingerbread and see how it's made but the place I would recommend is the shop behind me which is just next to the planetarium in Torun, just off the city centre.
Anyone who has watched my videos about walking the Camino in Spain may be interested to know that the Camino also passes through Torun and behind me you can see the Camino path marker with the Camino shell and this is one of uh, several routes that pass through Poland and eventually make their way to Santiago de Compostela all the way in Spain and I did actually meet someone in Spain who had walked from the city of Paz Poznan here in Poland uh, so if you want to walk the Camino you can start even here in Poland In the very centre of Torun you have an ethnographic museum which only costs 14 swati for an adult to enter so that's less than three pounds and it has a whole variety of buildings that have been brought to this site from different parts of Poland from the 18th, 19th and 20th century giving you an idea of what life used to be like here in Poland so again if you're visiting the city it's well worth uh, taking the time to visit and just learning a little bit more about the history and the culture of Poland. If you're visiting Poland at the end of October or beginning of November around the time of All Souls and All Saints one thing you should do is go to a local cemetery now that might sound like a rather strange um, suggestion but the reason for that is that around All Souls and All Saints uh, Polish people go and visit the graves of their loved ones they also put candles on all the graves and at night time uh, the graveyards are transformed by thousands and thousands of candles uh, burning away in the night and it is a most beautiful scene so it doesn't matter where you are in Poland uh, if you're in the country end of October beginning of November just go and look at the graves uh, walk through the cemeteries they are beautiful they're beautiful all year round they're really well maintained there's always flowers and candles on the graves but particularly at that time of the year it really is very spectacular, very beautiful and very special. Mm -hmm. 